What's going on? What's going on? This is your boy, Steve, the kidney nurse this evening. How's everyone doing? So look, this evening, we're going to talk about hospitalization. And I did have two people on, now it's not, but I'm going to tell you something. You know, we know how many people deal with chronic kidney disease, right? And we know how many people are hospitalized each year. A lot of warriors don't know what to do uh, when they get hit, that they got to go to the hospital, what to take, what to expect, how to prepare. They don't know. And so it's just sad. It just uh, disheartens me that only three people are on here. And I sent out a blast. I mean, I put it in the uh, lot of the groups, you know, just to let people know I wasn't going to be selfish and just do it. But I mean, free information, I mean, information that is very impactful and that can help you if you find yourself going to the hospital in the future. Because if you do have chronic kidney disease, uh, we don't want this to happen. But at some point, you may find yourself needing medical treatment in the future. Uh, you may even need to go to the hospital and stay there for a while. You may need to get a procedure done. Uh, who knows? Uh, but in any case, you want to be prepared. Not just be prepared if they call you for a transplant, but be prepared if you got to go to the hospital for unforeseen or unknown reasons. So let's talk about three things that you need to know. You definitely need to know if you're a renal patient, okay? You need to know the preparation you can do now, all right? You need to know about going to the hospital. And then you need to know what to do when you're at the hospital. And then after that, I got some other tips and options for you to think about. So look, let's talk about preparation. What can you do right now? Okay, what can you do right now just to prepare yourself uh, for the unforeseen future? You know, the unknown may happen. You had to go to the hospital. You rushing out the door. You may forget your wallet. You may forget this, that, and the other, insurance papers, whatever. So one thing you want to do is prepare. The first thing you do with that preparation List of doctors, okay? I don't care how many doctors you see. Write a list of all your doctors you see and why you see them, all right? Have it typed. If you can't type, get somebody to type it up for you. Print it out, have them type it up, and maybe put it in a folder, right? And then put that folder in, this, in the bag. But carry a list of your doctors in your wallet or in a folder. The hospital can use this list to alert your doctors and collect your medical history quickly. They can call your uh, primary care physician if that information is documented. Some patients don't remember a lot of this information. Phone numbers, addresses, doctor's name, uh, why you see this doctor, why you see that doctor. So if you can, have somebody uh, prepare a list for you or you prepare one yourself with a list of each diet, like endocrinologists, your cardiologists, your nephrologists, your, um, uh, who else? Maybe your orthopedic doctor, you know, so on, a rheumatoid arthritis doctor, so on and so on. Your access surgeon. You just want to make sure you have this stuff lined out and put in a folder or in your wallet or purse. Uh, and then make sure you keep this list updated, okay? If your doctors change, you may want to go, you may go see Dr. So and so and not see the other doctor. Make sure you update that list with the correct uh, health professional. Number two under preparation a list of medications. You want to make sure you have a list of medications typed up or written up in your wallet or in your bag. Uh, carry a list of medications and their doses. So if you get um, lisinopril, say 20 milligrams, 
uh, P-O, you take it, B-I-D. B-I-D is twice a day. So that's your dosage, 40 milligrams twice a day. This will help the hospital. Once you have that list, then they know, because they definitely got to do a medication uh, record review. If you haven't been to the hospital before, they got to know what you're taking so they don't give you medicine that may interact with medication that you may have taken. Plus, you just got to have that medication list with you so they can have it and continue the continuity of care. Uh, the list will help the hospital uh, give you treatment that doesn't conflict with any of your medicines. And that's what I said. Uh, and three, under preparation, what you can do right now is the emergency hospital bag. Now, transplant warriors or kidney warriors that are on the transplant list know about that bag because so often they may get that call. It's time to come in. We got that kidney for you. And then they carry that bag with them. And then some, they get the transplant and some, they go back home and they still got that bag and they got everything prepared and they got it sitting somewhere for the next time they get called. So you could do the same thing. We don't want you to go into the hospital, but what if all of a sudden you get a temperature and you don't know if you got COVID or not, you aching, you got 101, 103 temperature, and you just go straight to the uh, ER and forget everything and they admit you. Now you in there, nobody can't come in, right? The, you know, probably they can get you that stuff. I don't know how, but it may take a damn act of Congress because of COVID and what's going on with the second wave. So you want to be mindfully prepared to have that on deck. You know, if you're a kidney warrior, you're somebody with a chronic illness that maybe unfortunately have frequent visits to the ER, to the hospital, uh, you want to have a backpack, you want to have that information, uh, list of medication, list of doctors. And in that bag, you also want to have a couple of days worth of clothing and toiletries. Uh, also, having your own clothes make you feel dynamite. You don't want to be at the hospital and you got to wear that gown and with your butt showing from behind. You know, you got to tie that gown from behind. A lot of people don't like those gowns. You know, you got your underwears on and you got this hospital gown on and one is cold. All right, you're in the hospital. Uh, the heat is regulated so crazy. And, you know, those blankets uh, ain't ain't about squat. So uh, make sure you pack a bag, put some, um, maybe some pajamas in there, uh, comfortable PJs, some other toiletry items, make you feel at home while you're in the hospital. All right, let's talk about going to the hospital. All right, now a lot of warriors go to the hospital prematurely. To understand if you don't feel uh, good, you know, the first thing somebody think about is going to the ER. But sometimes, how many times you went to the ER and they sent you back home? Say, you okay? Mm -hmm. If you don't feel well, and have a question, you can always call the dialysis clinic or your doctor. They can help you understand uh, how serious the problem may or may not be. If you think you need to uh, go to the emergency room or have hospital care, definitely call 911 without hesitation or have someone like your family member or your neighbor uh, to drive you to the nearest emergency room. Uh, don't forget your doctor's list and medication list, as well as the hospital bag. And again, if you don't want to put that list in your wallet, just get a manila uh, folder or envelope, get that list typed up, put it in the envelope, the medication list, list of doctors, and just put it in the envelope and put it in the bag and put the clothes with the pajamas, some extra stuff. And you could go to the dollar store or CVS or Walgreens and get like small toiletry items in the small little small bag and just pack it and put it to the side. And so when that day or if that day ever arrives, 
pick it up, you're going to the hospital, you got your bag. That's what we do in the dialysis clinic. We prepare. If there's a natural disaster and we got to exit that unit, we have an emergency bag with saline and other items if we have to evacuate that unit and the patients have to go out uh, doors. Why do you think they do emergency takeoff? <laughs> yeah. So now, number three, why are you at the hospital? Tell the hospital that you're a dialysis patient. If you want to get seen faster, when you go to the ER, tell them you're a dialysis patient. If you're too sick to tell them yourself, have your family member tell them. Show the hospital your doctor and medication list if you have them with you. Make sure you have them. Also, when you're in the hospital, call if you think you're going to be admitted, call the dialysis unit and let them know that you're in the hospital, okay? This way, they say they ain't going to worry about you, but all they're going to do is give you a chair away. They're going to call another patient in to fill up that spot. Uh, so, three, try to remember any tests and procedures uh, they do at the hospital. We know it can be really hard to remember, but just try. However, they're going to give you a discharge instructions and papers of everything they've done in the hospital. Make sure you make a copy for yourself, right? And then give the other to the I mean, to the dialysis center. Just don't give it to the dialysis center and don't get it back. You want to keep a record of all uh, care, consultations, treatments. If you haven't already done so, you want to go get a notebook like a binder, a hole puncher, and keep records of this stuff. I'm telling you, because in the long run, it will help. If something happened to you and your family need to see some records, they can go right there. Uh, and then you can put any tests like x-ray, hepatitis, flu vaccine, pneumonia shots, anything like that could go in that book and you can have your our uh, own records of vaccinations. All right. Again, remember to take your discharge instructions. Those are the instructions they give you. The nurse uh, gives you once you're uh, leaving the hospital, let you know what you need to do as a patient. Um, also, bring them to the dialysis clinic, as I pointed out once before. We definitely need to see because, see, on these instructions that you may have been getting a course of antibiotics in the hospital and they may want to continue that course of antibiotics. So make sure you bring that those discharge instructions, everything they give you, you bring. All right. And then we'll hand you back what we don't need and then you can go from there. Also, remember. If you have a fistula or a graft in your arm or leg, tell the hospital nurses and the uh, patient care techs in the labs not to check blood pressure on these extremities where your access may be. Also, do not draw blood from a fistula or a graft unless it's an emergency and it's a dialysis nurse or technician. OK, let me repeat that. If you have a fistula or graft in your arm or leg, tell the hospital nurses and techs not to check blood pressure or draw blood from that arm or leg. Also, never let uh, if, if the lab person come in and say, oh, I can't draw blood from your veins. They too small. Do not. I repeat, do not let them draw blood from your access, your AV fistula or graft. That is a no-no. Only time that happens is by strict emergency. If you're going out, meaning if you're passing out or having a cardiac event episode and they need to get some type of uh, fluid or IV uh, shot to you, 
they're going to put that in your arm and give it to you hot shot. Okay. Some other options you may have that you may never thought about. Some medical issues are emergencies, right? Others are routine. Others are routine. That's what I'm saying. Some you may think you need to go to the hospital for one thing and they'll send you back home. Okay. What do you do for the in-between issues like fever, without rash, sore throat, small cuts, ear pain, and more? Sometimes people go to the emergency room for the in-between problems, which, as I said, they send you home. Uh, but did you know that there are other options that might be faster, better, or less expensive? And you know what I'm talking about. Some of these other options may include urgent care, right? Your primary care doctor's office and your kidney doctor's office. And with that being said, guys, I thank you for watching this episode of Steve the Kidney Nurse Hospitalization. Know before you go. Peace.